Welcome to our session. Uh, this is my first go at a live session. I know we've got one scheduled uh, on Thursday evening. So we're going to do uh, a session this evening uh, set up as a live session. For those of you that are uh, that happen to be, you know, popping on board, catching live. That'll be awesome. I've got, uh, I've, I set a, I set a chat window up for those of you that are here. This is an un, uh, this is a brand new uh, thing for me. So if uh, those of you that have never had a chance to be into a room with us, we are, we're gonna be, um, we're gonna be sharing uh, some charts and just kind of taking a look at the market overall. And I may have a surprise guest joining here shortly. So um, for those of you that are new to the channel, we, we uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, we do our daily market commentary. Uh, and the concept of the daily market commentary is really just to talk about, you know, what are, what are the markets doing overall? What are some potential breakout trades, some turning points? Uh, this is actually uh, the I haven't done a live one of these yet, so we'll see if uh, we'll see if anybody winds up joining in. But we do have chat uh, access and available for anybody who's uh, who's going to be hopping into the uh, to the chat window as well. So uh, those of you that are that are here, I don't know if you can chat or not, but it looks like I got a couple of you that joined me. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go through today's market a little bit um because like i said this is really a test because i've not done one of these live ones before um and uh, i don't know if you can see my screen or not so if uh, if this video winds up being terrible then it will be but this is uh kind of like a, a nightly wrap up if you will a kind of a nightly recap of some of the things that i uh, that i look at overall so uh what i'm going to do is start off by looking at the s p and kind of analyzing a little bit of today's movements right so Today in the S&P, we had talked about a potential reversal at this area right here. Uh, and this is a confirmation style entry, right? Meaning we wait for price to come into the level and then we get short as it comes back down out of the level. Now, not sure, depending on your risk tolerance, if you would have gotten stopped out on this position or not. Um, it, I mean, it really only came just about a tick or two above that level. Uh, so I'm not sure if you, uh, if you, got, uh, if you got hit on that stop or not, if you did, uh, if you did, it you know depends on you on on really kind of where your uh, where your risk levels would be and what you're willing to take. Uh, but now we have come back up into this level. Now this level is no longer going to be valid, so I've got to take this level off the charts since we have come back into the level. Now we did not create any new swing highs. We didn't create any new swing lows. So all in all, I think that we're still in a uh, we're we're still in a downtrend, right? Um, we're we're still in a uh, in an overall downtrend. Markets are still in a in in more of a falling mode than they are in, than they are in a uh, in a rising mode. And so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna still be overall net bearish. And there's not really to me a place that I want to be a buyer down here. Did I catch this move up? Absolutely not. This move up was not. Uh, was not something that I had uh, that I had assumed would uh, would work, and so uh, that one uh, didn't work out in my particular favor. And we're going to let that thing go now. But where's our next reversal opportunity? Well, in my mind, it's up here in the Nasdaq, right? So right up here in the Nasdaq, this is the level that I talked about this morning. Um, we have on this level right here, we've got this little bit of wick over wick area on the hourly chart. Now, the, the thing I like about it is that it's also a little bit below this area here, which acted as support in the past, right? This acted as our support. It acted as a little bit of a, of a demand control area uh, all through here. This was kind of a demand control area. So... <clears throat> there's a chance in my mind that this becomes a pretty good supply control area. Now, a little concerned that we came close to the level and were unable to get that order filled. So the fact that we, that we, uh, that we couldn't get the order filled kind of gives me a little bit of pause for concern on this. Um, <clears throat> and we'll see if this, uh, if this comes back in uh, going forward, I may consider converting this over to a, uh, to a confirmation style entry instead of a just a just a short limit entry. Um, you know, it, it's 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 definitely been weakened by this. The thing I like about this, if I move to the fifteen minute chart, for those of you that uh, that look at this particular that, at this particular style, I like the time of day that this was created. 
right? So our time of day is pretty good. Now, there's a good chance that we'll go right through that and come all the way up to, the, to here. This is genuinely the origin of the drop, right? This is the origin of that move down, um, which is kind of a retest off of this level. <clears throat> and that came from the, the gap that we had way over here in the past, right? That's really where where it uh, where it came from uh, a couple of weeks back, so uh, a couple a couple of days back, excuse me. Uh, that area in here was this gap down. We rallied back up into the gap fill, and then a huge sell off. I'm feeling like this is a good reversal point, and we'll see what it uh, what it does from there. So that's the level that I'm looking at right now in the uh, in the Nasdaq. So uh, let's see. I don't I don't see if you guys are able to chat. I know I've got a couple of you that are watching the session. Uh, once again, for those of you guys that just joined, this is my first time doing a live session. So it's kind of a little bit of a test for me. So I don't know if you can chat. I don't know if you can see me. I, I got absolutely nothing. So I can't uh, I can't really see who's who all is uh, is in the room, who's all participating, who's watching. I know I sent an invite out to somebody else to uh, to kind of participate with me. We'll see if he joins in the room here shortly because he he can certainly talk some charts as well. So. Uh, let's see, let's do, take a look at crude. Actually, you know what I want to look at today that, that had some pretty beast, some pretty decent movements was the great British pound. So great British pound today came smoking down. We finally had a big move down in the pound and it came right down to our little buying area. Our fair price value area here in the pound was off this daily chart. And that's really where we came down and immediately stopped falling. So we stopped falling right at that level today and then bounced off of that particular area. I'd love to tell you that I took that area. I didn't. Um, but in my mind, this is now we've bounced off that area and we've got a little bit of basing. So this basing here, we've got two areas up above where we could see a bit of a reversal. I'm not a fan of either one of them, mostly because this is really kind of a retest of this area up above here. And so I'd want to come all the way up to here as my next level, right? This would be the next level that I'm going to look at for my reversal opportunity. So we're going to come all the way up here, 2713 by 2736 um, would be uh, would be really the next uh, the next area that I would that I would shoot for uh, in there. Okay. So that to me is the next area of supply, uh, the supply control zone that makes the most sense. Uh, you know, we think about it, we, we, you know, we hit this level base, 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 strong move away. And there's going to be some, some sell orders left up in this region. Now this long wick up here is why I chose this area there. That long wick kind of invalidates this area here to the left because we came up through it and ate away all of those all of those little orders that happen to be left uh, in that in that space and in that zone. Okay, all right. Next that I'm going to take a look at uh, is I want to go back to crude oil, but that was the that pound was one that I really liked today. <clears throat> so looking at crude, uh, in crude we also have a very similar basing that we had in the pound, right? Where we seem to keep hitting that same level. Well, that same level we keep hitting is that whole round number support. Uh, and that whole round number support there sitting at about 50, um, that's kind of the area that I would that would would pay the most attention to uh, as the spot where we would see a bit of a reversal coming back through. So uh, if indeed we are able to break down from there, where's my next stopping point? Well, I've got to go out to the daily chart to really look at where's my next stopping point in crude oil. So when I come down to the daily chart, you know, theoretically, we could come all the way down into this region here as our next uh, as our next potential stopping point, as our next area where we could see, um, you know, price kind of fall from this particular region. Now, what does that mean for getting short? Well, for getting short, the level that I would look for is definitely going to be a bit higher, but I've got to go to like a 15 minute time period. Um, the 15 minute time period makes a lot more sense and is a lot better as of a, uh, of a turning point, uh, potential opportunity. So when I go to the 15 minute chart, uh, for those of you that watch the daily market commentary, I just had one of my co-star hosts show up. So, um, Charlie say good night to everybody. Night. All right. Just had the, we just had my co-star host show up to tell me good night. Um, <clears throat> 
this 15 minute level uh, in crude, this one right here was a beautiful little reversal. Um, unfortunately, it was found it was formed in the middle of the in the middle of the night, right? And we got a one tick touch into it before the sell off. Still could be valid. Um, all of this up here, when I look at all this, this is Sunday night into Monday, um, but this is right around the market open. And so this is really where I'm going to have to look is is pretty much this whole area up here for my next reversal point. So 52.31, 52.74. And then when I, when I trim that down on the hourly chart, this is really the region uh, that this is kind of what it would look like in here. But we're basing sideways. And this is kind of sloppy price action, right? This is sloppy price action, really difficult to make a whole lot of moves in that kind of sloppy price action because essentially when I go to the four hour chart, what am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at price going sideways. Now it's going sideways after a huge drop in price. My momentum to the downside has essentially stopped. I was speaking to uh, I was speaking to one of my subscribers today, and what we were talking about was how does how does MACD work, right? He was asking specifically about MACD uh, as a uh, basically as a tool, right? So talking about MACD as a tool for um, for identifying when we when we may have you know uh, opportunities. Well, MACD is only going to tell me momentum, and it's really telling me the distance between two moving averages. So if I throw Oops, wrong, wrong one. No, nope, still the wrong one. Is it this one? There it is. So here's my MACD on the chart, right? What you'll notice on the four hour chart, if I throw MACD on there, is that as I'm having lower lows in price, right? All through here is we were getting lower lows in price. I started to get higher lows, slightly higher lows in my momentum. And what that means is that my momentum was starting to slow down as price was was falling. So what was really happening is that you got two moving averages and those two moving averages were getting closer together, right? What does MACD measure? MACD measures the moving average of moving averages, right? So when I've got something that measures the moving average of moving averages, by definition, it's going to be slower. But sometimes it's good to have that little bit of a slowness because it can help me see the forest through the trees and see that, okay, yes, indeed, on lower, on consecutive lower swing lows in price, I've got higher swing lows in momentum, right? Now, my momentum is now basically sideways at this point. And so it's not an indicator to tell me whether I'm a buyer or whether I'm a seller. However, it's an indicator to give me an idea as to, um, let me move, remove all these studies. It's an indicator to give me an idea as to where I may be willing to, uh, to, to change my bias. I still need high quality demand or high quality supply. Uh, and I need those areas to be control areas before I'm going to, I'm going to do any buying or selling. Right. Um, for those of you that, <clears throat> that are, you know, that, that watch the, the video on a regular basis, we look for those high quality price control points uh, as our as our place to to get long or to get short, uh, you know, from a, from a price action standpoint, I use a lot of the stuff from Laurentiu Demir's book, Price Action Breakdown. Uh, if you guys haven't read it, it's a really good book about about fair price value areas and where's our control price, and that's one of the one of the things that I'm that I'm really you know kind of looking for in here, and that's what I see in this sideways price action. This fifty two fifty is kind of my control price. It's kind of in the middle of this chopping around. But 50 is definitely support, right? Question is, from a fundamental standpoint, where does that support stop being there, right? The price can continue to go lower. All right, gold. So gold today had a little bit of a long setup in gold and price came halfway into the level. And then we saw one, two, three, four, five candlesticks where it did nothing and then popped down through. And now it's just kind of chopping around. So gold realistically uh, should have been a stop out for either a break even or a small loss. You know, our rule is pretty simple. If we get six candlesticks that don't move, then we want to get out of the position anyway. Um, I'll always take those small losses over the big losses anytime I can get them. Still have a breakout long above this 1256 area, uh, but gold definitely did come back down uh, and, and test this, this low right here. Now, I didn't have a long setup on this low, 
Uh, but we may get a little bit of a bounce from there. I'd love to see some basing ahead of this 1256 uh, as an opportunity to uh, to uh, to go long and, and kind of jump in there. So, um, all right, next. Let's try. Okay, so it looks like I'm supposed to be getting. I'm supposed to be getting joined by uh, one of my good friends, who's also a really good trader, Taylor, and he's. It looks like he's trying to. Once again, this is for those of you that are new. This is a test. I'm just giving this a. We're just giving this a go. I've never. Uh, I've never done this. Uh, this screen sharing and and hangout deal. So I'm. Uh, we're giving this one a. We're giving this one a test so that uh, we can see if we get more people in there. So. I'm going to type hello in the chat box. So if anybody can see me, you can, you can type in as well. Um, we're giving it a test and he's supposed to join in and we're going to analyze some charts together quite possibly, but we're uh, seeing how this bad boy works. He just texted me that he's trying to figure it out himself. So um, in the meantime, I figured I would just take a look at a, a couple of things and, and kind of run through them. So bonds, we are right smack in between two levels in the bonds. If you look at the bonds versus crude oil, you get a very similar picture, right? Where we had, strong move up, but then our momentum has kind of started to weaken, right? And I don't need to, to do this again, but you can see that my momentum is really falling off of a cliff. Um, and even though I've got, you know, the same, basically the same price pack, price action, right? So price action is, is still sideways, even though my momentum has completely fallen off a cliff, my breakout is still a better opportunity up here. This is getting less and less probable when we base in front of it. So this I'm going to convert for those of you that watch this on a regular basis. I convert this to a confirmation style entry uh, as my confirmation style entry may make more sense. All right. Let me, uh, let me text my other, uh, my compatriot joining in. All right. I just told him to call me. I can just throw him on speaker and put him in front of the mic. For those of you that can can hear me or see me or whatever we're doing. So we'll uh, we'll see if that rolls. All right. Next in the Aussie. So in the Aussie, uh, I'm really glad today that I didn't set anything up in the Aussie. I was was tempted to, um, you know, take a look at a at a at a uh, at an opportunity in here. But I didn't really want to do that because it didn't seem to fit my risk parameters. I thought, you know, there's just a little too much junk happening and so we put the short in way up here but that's pretty far away from current price and i sometimes hate picking levels so far away from current price because i almost feel like it's a cop out right like i'm uh like i'm cheating but i'm you know not really trying to do that i, I really want to you know get good opportunities i just you know i feel like if i go to this level here which is the one just above current price we've got a lot of sideways price action in there and that is you know, one thing that turns me off. The other thing that turns me off is that we came down and then popped back up into it just a little bit here before falling. The other side of that is, is that all this noise is in place, right? So then I said, well, uh, you know, as I come up a bit higher and I'm what I'm looking for are where's the fair price value area before a strong move one direction or the other. And as I come up a bit higher, I see this origin of a nice move down. Now, this one is a really nice move. My big problem with this one um, for those of you that are, uh, that are, that are aware is that we were, the U S markets were closed that day. And when the U S markets are closed, I've got a lower degree of probability, right? So with that U S markets being closed, that, that turned me off to this level. So I need to go a bit higher. Now, when I come a bit higher, I come to this one. Now, although this one, we, we chopped around in it for a while. This is all Globex session, right? This is all Globex session. And if I shut off my extended hours, what you'll notice is that this is the gap, little sideways. This is the opening of the market that day. So if I shut off my extended hours, this area then all of a sudden makes a lot more sense, right? Now, that also means that this may become a magnet for price as well um, when I do shut those extended hours off. But it's always good to look at it for you know, what, when's the glow, what does the Globex have to do with it? Well, the Globex is this here, right? All this right there, um, is Globex. And so it's much, much, much lower volume, right? So not as much going on, uh, in that, uh, in that, in that pay, in that, in that space. All right. Uh, let's see. What's the next level I want to look at here. Didn't get, 
Didn't get a call yet from T, so we'll just let this be for a moment. All right. Uh, Euro. Now, here in the Euro, I had a really good trade set up in the Euro. Um, we had a short off of this level here. It was a beautiful trade. Touch and go. Came down to our long, and price started to rally up. Now, for those of you that watched the video this morning, I said, if you got long on our trade right here, it's time to take that that uh, stop and move it to break even. And I hope that you did because we came right down into here, popped right back out of it, and then smoked right through the level. I mean, we smoked through that level like a cheap Cohiba. So this is why we move our stops uh, when it looks like we've come anywhere near our our you know that first target. And this was a really strong sell-off uh, in the euro that corresponded. Uh, a lot with uh, with what happened in with the Brexit uh, vote today. So let's see. Oh, he says pick up. I guess my phone isn't ringing. I guess he's trying to call me and it's not ringing. I'm gonna put him on speaker. Hey man. Hey buddy. What's up? Nothing. I think you're. I think I think everybody can hear you on YouTube. You could probably hear yourself. No, I, I just muted my uh, my headphones. That's awesome. So I guess I guess the the hangout idea is not working. Yeah, I I, I don't think you could hear me at all. I couldn't. Uh, know. I was trying. Yeah, you know, I'll hang that up. Okay. Well, well, whoever's on can now hear you. So those of you that are that are that we got like twelve people on, but I can't see any chat boxes or anything like that. So I don't know what to look for. I'm uh I'm hoping Some people have been chatting. I, I can see the chats. Oh, I'm glad you can see the chats because I can't, and I don't even know where to look. This is genuinely. I mean. People can, you guys, I, I hope you don't laugh at me too bad. This is quite literally the first time I've ever done this. So I, uh, I'm I've never done it. So I, I can't tell you, there's gotta be a button there that you can click on that will give you a little chat window. I'm ho I see a chat window, but it says group chat and it's only me in there. <laughs> huh. So if anybody has questions, Taylor, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you uh, read them out and answer them. So. Uh, Sandeep Modi wants to uh, say, how about the CAD? Have how, you talked about the CAD yet? I didn't talk about the CAD yet. Let's talk about the CAD. You can right. talk about it too, man. I miss you, buddy. It's good to, good to hear your voice. For those of you guys that are, that are, that are just listening to, to Taylor on here for the first time, uh, I've, I've known Taylor for, since I had a full head of hair and was handsome. <laughs> That's generous. That's generous. No, uh, how long? Eight years now? I think it's I think it's eight years. Yeah, I've known you longer yeah, than I've had. Than, I've known you. I've known you longer than I've had children. So, two thousand ten. Yeah. All right. So when I look at the CAD, tell me what your what what time frames do you normally use when you're when you when you do these, buddy? Me? Yeah. What's um, your what's your starting time frame? I always start. I usually start on a, a daily, and then I flip it out to the weekly. Okay. I like looking at the daily chart. Um, Look at the weekly chart, and then and then start to drill down. Uh, I use a lot of uh, indicators. So when I'm on smaller time frames, I use uh, OHLC. Yesterday, I look at the open high, low close of the previous day uh, to keep myself in perspective of the previous day and the previous couple of days. Okay, you know, so trying to find confluence of, of zones around uh, the previous day's close or open or areas that broke the previous day's high or low. But I like daily charts. I like 60 minute charts. I like 15 minute charts. I like two minute charts. And I'll go down to the 15 second if I have to. Are you kidding? You'll really go that low? Well, you know, I, I used to, and I still will look at tick charts. Um, but I figured I look at time frames, you know, actual times, time based charts so much that if I need to go down to a really small time frame, why not keep it on a time based chart? Right. So 15 seconds is. Uh, I'll get down to that, but it, and I don't do it too often. But the the way the Nasdaq's been trading lately, uh, you almost have to. Okay, so I what's funny is I've gone just the opposite. So over the past I don't know year and a half to two years, what I have found is that I've increased my time frame, and I almost yeah. never go below fifteen minutes. And you just take the wide. See, I still like to try and pinpoint an area. See, oh, I do too. I just like a big wide area. Gotcha. Well, I like a nice small area. So, so like, uh, like in the NQ, right? And you weren't on earlier. Yeah. Were you on earlier when I went over the NQ level? Uh, no. Well, I, I, that's when I first got on. All right. So yeah. So like this NQ level in my mind is a is a it, this is 
6729 by 6763 is a depending on your risk tolerance could be pretty wide of an area. Say it again. 6729 by 6763. Sure, definitely. So 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 here's my the message that I've actually spoken a lot about lately is nobody got into this game to be a futures trader, right? Nobody 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 started trading when and and said, "Hey, I I want to be a futures trader when I grow up." They didn't do that. They right. they want to make I want to make money. So if this is the level that offers me the highest degree of probability, because it's because what I got pissed off or angry about was too often I'd go to that five minute chart or two minute chart and I'd get stopped out and then it would go the way I thought it was going to go anyway, um, because I wasn't wide enough. Sure, no, no, that, and that that's the risk you take. And you know when I say I go down to that small of a time frame, I, the zones that I trade. Are, are always areas that either break, you know, is the, is the area that broke a previous high, broke a previous low. It's a trend making, trend breaking type of area. The only reason that I go down to that small time frame is to, if, if the the way the Nasdaq's been trading lately, I, I'm not going to take a forty point zone. Right. And I'm short. I, I just got short on it. It, it. it got my entry probably as I was walking over to my computer a little while ago at uh, sixty six ninety two. Off this off this little level right here. Off the five minute. Let me look at yours. It's a nice little level to get short off of if you if you use five minutes. Yeah, yeah and so when when the market was um, right right below it, right below it, so right, it just based, it had just dropped and just broken that previous low by a little bit. Right. And it and it pulled back out to um it had pulled back up just a hair. And just missed me by like a, two, a couple points. So I left the trade out and, and just got filled. Um, but I was willing to, to take that small risk because that was the last place buyers held the market before it dropped. And that drop did break that previous low to the left of that just a hair. This one here? No, no, no. Back um, from, if you look down on the bottom, the, the, the low from uh, the 15. Oh, it, on, down here. No, 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 no. Keep going. Keep going. No, it broke the. It broke, I wish I could. I wish I could. Um, Control my screen. Yeah, or click, and you could see where I was. Click right there, right there, right there. If you look at that low, up, 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 up to the right, to the right. Let me let me give you the price. Let me <laughs> Just give my, me the time. Price. Yeah, give me the number, brother. Uh, let's see. So I'm talking about the low at 66.83 that happened right at four o'clock Eastern. Got it. 66.83, four o'clock Eastern. Right. And so that, that, that one green candle is the last place buyers held it. And that's also the open of today. So it, it opened and then dropped and that drop, the continuation of that drop broke that low. Got it. So I was willing to, you know, take that small little risk, uh, you know, basically a six point risk. And I've gotten about a 30 point drop out of it. Nice. Okay. So you took the breakdown out of that low rather than the reversal when it came back up into here. No, I missed. I was hoping to get it at right at six, six fifteen. It looks like. Right. I, I had my entry and, and the market rallied up to 60, 690. It didn't quite get it, and then it dropped all the way down, and it just came in and got me filled just a few minutes ago. Got it. Okay. So you're still you're still in it now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Take your money off the table. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now it might it might it might keep going down, but this is a this is a nice little level, and we got we got two nice candles here. This is you you know take some money off the table, you get another you get another bite at the apple. Right. Exactly. Nice. Cool. But, so, so to go back to your question, I uh, always start on the bigger time frame and then work my way down. And, uh, you know, I love trading with the trend, but that's what the higher time frame is for to tell you if you should continue trading with it or look to take the other side. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of what I've gone to. I'm going to go back to the Canadian dollar because somebody asked about the Canadian. Um, anybody else type in the chat box, by the way, since I can't see the chat box? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Yes, Ingrid. Oh, hi, Ingrid. I love Ingrid. She's awesome. All right. So on this... Edmund, Edmund Guchnick is in here. Oh, Big E. He said, what did I just stumble on? He's awesome. 
He is awesome. All right. Um, yeah. So on 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 uh, on the Canadian, I didn't do anything on the Canadian today. Nothing. A whole fat load of nothing. Um, primarily because I was not comfortable with these last on. So, so I use the four hour chart as my primary, am I a buyer? Am I a seller? Right. I'm, I still use that four hour to make that decision. And we had these two wiki moves in a row, right? One after the other. And so I kind of stayed away from it at that point. We bounced off of this level here, which I had, had found on the daily uh, right way back into here. And I felt like we would get a bit of a bounce off of here, but I don't think it's going to be a great bounce because this wasn't a super strong level. Right. I mean, this is, and this is that level on the, on the weekly, it actually looks a little bit cleaner, right? So on the weekly, that looks cleaner where we may get a bit of a bounce, but I don't like the fact that we've hit it once and been unable to really do anything out of it. Um, off of here, we hit it once and it's just, it's kind of petering out. So that makes me more inclined to be a seller. And as a and as as I'm more inclined to be a seller, I think there's a decent reversal right here in that little wick over wick area. See that one, T? Yep. So then I go down and look at it on a 15. Um, and when I zoom in on that on the 15 minute chart, I'm gonna pop this up just a bit higher. So I take that wick as well. I like that. So that's my level that I like on the 15. Now, my only concern with this is that I've gotten to the point. So here's my here's my thing when I talk about core strategy and 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 reversals overall, right? In, in, in you know when I used to teach that that style essentially exclusively, is that it's sometimes if you if you if you don't look to the left, like it does a really good job of explaining the orders that were left behind, but it never takes into account orders that are put in after the fact, right? Right. So like we know for a hundred percent certainty that at this level, there were no more willing buyers, but there still had to be willing sellers, right? Agreed. Mm -hmm. And that's what, right. that was the origin of the move. That what that's what caused the move. However, how many more orders have been added to the queue since that was created, Right. Now, I think we'll get more orders added to the queue here in, in the green box than we will here in, let's make this one a, I'm just going to make this one a, I don't know, a purple box, a blue box. So I think we'll get more orders added to the queue in the green box than we will in the blue box. And the reason I think you'd get more orders added to the queue in the green box is because this was an old area of support. And there are so many people that follow the old adage, old support becomes new resistance, right? Um, and you're going to have so many people that are just saying, well, this was a breakout from a triangle pattern. So when I short the retest back to here. So yes, you still got the orders that are left behind, but I actually have started looking more to the left of the order of the level after it was created to see is there going to be some psychological reasons for more orders to be added to the queue after what was left behind? Yeah, so. no, I, I totally agree with that. When you, um, you know, really, it it goes to it, it goes to what you're saying. Uh, buyers become sellers, sellers become buyers. You know, any any real supplier demand level is there due to a prior level's existence. Right. You know, I could see this area, the blue area you have, I could see the market just coming into that area and, and coming back down to where it is right now and then kicking through and actually reversing at your green area. Right. You know, that little, that little spot, the, the blue area is more of a little pause, just a quick pullback. The green area would be more of a reversal. Right. So in my mind, yeah. the green, the, the, the blue area is more of a of a day trade and the green area right. could could extend itself all the way out to be a swing trade exactly good nice good eyeball on that man any other any other questions come up in the chat box um it's one is how is uh how are you doing chuck i'm doing great. i'm doing great <laughs> and any better i'd be twins there'd be two of me uh nice nice um, so I wish I could. I really do wish I could see the chat box. I, I kind of miss the ability to see that. I got to figure out how to do that. So, 
So let's see. I, I just came up with uh, I, I, there's something that I've taught in my class. I just came up with it years ago, just randomly, and, and I'm sure it's something that people use. But um, I finally got an indicator made for it yesterday. Or oh, you did? Week. Okay. Yeah. So have I sent it to you? Uh, I don't think you have. So it takes the the daily ATR from the previous day. Uh huh. And it it takes the current day's opening price. It adds one ATR up, one ATR down. Okay. It plots lines. So right when the day opens, it plots one ATR up, one ATR down, and it also plots today's current opening price. So it's amazing um, to see how often a market runs its average true range. Not not like it opens and goes straight up its its daily ATR or it opens and goes straight down, but throughout the day, how it wiggles around and ultimately hits the average true range. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I got to send you this. It's, it's on trade station. I'm, I'm sure you can get someone to program it for you on uh, think or swim. Okay. But like, like if you look at the NASDAQ from today. Okay. Hold on. Let me get to it. Yeah. If you send it to me, I, I definitely will see if I can get somebody to do that. Oh, wait, I, I found a way to find chat. Did I lose you, buddy? No, I'm here. Okay, you're still here. I found a way to find chat. That's awesome. Can you see everybody? Yeah, now I can see it. Sounds like something Chuck should share with me. Larry, as soon as I can as soon as he shares it with me, I'll uh, I'll I'll let you know. I don't know. It's up to him. It's his uh it's his deal, bro. The coolest part was I went on a trade station's website, the the, the trade station forum, and uh, asked him, and you know, I thought that someone was gonna charge me. And someone from Trade Station did it all for me. So and did Sweet. it exactly like I want it. Nice. So, Look at Trade Station it, taking good care the, of you. The best part is it shows historical about sixty days back. So you can go back and study and see how much a day uh, market moves to its average. Okay. Yeah. So today in the Nasdaq, it or yesterday when it opened last night, it opened at sixty five ninety five. Yes. Right. The the ATR from the previous day was 181 around that. Okay. So if you take the low of today, okay. The, the low of that trading which was around 6534, right? To the high which was just over 7116. Right. It's identical. It's one daily ah, ATR. Okay. So it's a way that when you see the market open, so it just plots like, it, it just plots those ATR lines on your chart rather than down below. More or less, it well, it, it just takes the opening price and it adds one ATR up, adds one ATR down, and then you can go in and figure out real quick. Okay, so today, so far the market opened at sixty. I'm, I'm still on the Nasdaq. It opened at sixty. And you're using the daily chart for this, right? Yeah, but the indicator plots it on a five-minute chart, on a 60-minute. It plots it on any time frame that I'm on. It, it's a stagnant. It plots just like four trader pivots. Interesting. You know that? Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. So it's a great way to, to, to kind of have a feel for where the market might go today. Or you wake up in the morning, it's been trading every night, and it, it traded below its open 30 points and, and you know it moves 40 points on a day that it starts to rally and it gets above its open if it, if it gets 10 points above its open that it's probably going to start to fall back again so it gives you an idea of where where it's likely to, to truly have a good turning point okay yeah and then i'm and wondering if saying, i can i'm wondering if i can find a way to do that with with the existing atr study there may be a way there may be a way to do that with the existing atr yeah, it's something that, that I've told students about and I've used. I kind of happened upon it, but I got tired of doing the math, and so finally someone did it for me and made the indicator, and it's pretty cool. Right. I'll shoot it to you. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. I'll take a look at it. So I'm wondering, though, if I – here we go. Let's see. Uh, put on volume. Let's see. If I put it on price – now, that looks terrible. <laughs> that didn't That didn't work at all, Taylor. Uh, no, this is, is a custom. Yeah, this is a custom job. Cool. Nice. I like it. What else you looking at, man? Oh, that's, uh, 
Anything else fun yeah. you're looking at? I, I, I look at okay. the same I look at the same markets every day. You know when I do the when I do the daily videos. So I let's, I let's see, too. Angelo. Um, I wrote an indicator for Toss that shows high, low, close, open, and plots fifty percent, uh, and the floor trader pivot. Cool, nice, nice. Larry, you should really like Taylor. He's a good dude. We like Taylor. Angelo <laughs> says, uh, "Where are you setting the start of the ATR range? The open of the current day." That's what you said, right? Yeah, yeah. So it takes the, the the daily ATR calculation from the previous day, and then it adds to uh, the opening of today of the current day. Cool. Hey, Nestor, glad to see that you're back, man. Hope that vacation was absolutely awesome. By the way. Yeah, Michelle. Michelle's got the same. Michelle does it. She adds it to the high of the day and the low of the day, Larry, and. Uh, I don't know how to get this indicator to do that, so I just I just do it from the open of the day. Nice, cool, nice. What else? What else you looking at, man? Anything else fun that you're looking at that, that we can we can share before, some, before we pop some off? Gold. I'm trying to think of some. You know, I'm, I'm teaching a class this week. I'm trying to think of some stocks that we pulled up. Um, I'm drawing a blank right now of any good setups. I, I'm the same as you. I trade the Nasdaq. I trade oil. Yeah, um, I'll tell you on on stocks that I pulled up. Um, I, I've been I gotta tell you, man, I've been I, I've been killing it on the Fang stocks on the short side, but they mm. they they had a little bit of strength today that I was that I'm a little uncomfortable with. Um, so like I had a nice short Netflix that came down and hit our target. Um, today though, it, it you know we we picked up one and a half percent, scared me a little bit today. That one came down and hit our target. I'm still bearish on it overall. But I've been short the fang. We, you know, we've been shorting the fang stocks in the room for a while, um, and then Facebook today actually came back into the level. We shorted that one recently. That one's that one's actually built the most momentum it's had in a while. Um, yeah. I, I was I was kind of disappointed today that it came back in. Uh, you know, all this as as high back up as it did because I was hoping for a target down here of one twenty ninety five. Um, I, I don't see a good reversal. And then Apple today, Apple, I was talking to Eric Ochotnicki earlier today. He told me he bought a bunch of Apple down here. This is, this could be, I don't know if anybody else bought Apple down here today. We have a little bit of demand. That could be the spot where we see a little bit of a reversal. Um, yeah, I need, I needed to go the other way too, Larry. So so here, here's a couple. Um, how about uh, Home Depot? That that zone that it came into a week and a half ago on Home Depot, and now it's retesting it again. Hold on, I haven't looked at this one in a long time. Ingrid, good question. Are you planning to do live instead of recording for the DMC? No, Ingrid. Um, in case you missed this a bit late, I actually Taylor was nice enough to 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 come on board and be my guinea pig because I I know we've got Thursday nights live session scheduled, and I needed somebody to help me with it and. Taylor was nice enough to come on board, and anytime I get a chance to look at charts with with T frame, I do. So I'm still going to do the recording for the DMC. So um, anyway, so Facebook, you or excuse me, Home Depot, which level? Uh, if you go back, the the bear was a bear trap. If you look back to the left, you got that breakout zone right here. No, 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 like down, like the demand zone. It just came into. I'm talking like oh, uh, way down from, here from a year ago. We just came into it and we just retested it again. So got I'm talking it. like the 160 area, 160, but you got to get back in time. Yeah, this area here. Yeah, below that, below that. Oh, back. this one way down here. Yeah, no, right, yeah, right there, right there. That that breakout point, right there. Kind of, yeah. kind of. This tiny little level right in there. Yeah. So what do you? How do you like the the second test into that? So this area here, well, I'm not in love with that as an area for a couple of reasons. Biggest reason being that it's the second test. And if I use this, here's test one, here's test two, but we traded all the way to the bottom of it. Um, that's why I don't love it. That's the that's my only issue with it at this point because we've hit it twice, right? But, but I'm talking about the, the area it came into, the, the, the right right above yeah that we just came into uh up a little bit higher a little bit higher a little bit higher kind I'm, of there's probably a little bit of a delay between you and me so about 168 maybe let me look on mine let 
let me get the prices. So I see this little level right here, which is 165.46 by 168.10. That's it. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. All right. I thought you were looking at the one below, which had been tested twice. So uh, No, so that it, it didn't reverse the downtrend, but it is still – would you have taken that second retest in today? Today's? Um, yeah. Probably not. I didn't even look at it, but probably not. Um, which is which is always hindsight, right? Looking at it here. And the real only reason I wouldn't have was because the first time we gapped into it, we didn't explosively move away from it. We hit it and then one, two, three candlesticks sat sideways before the, the big move away. And so I'm looking for that explosive move away for me to be interested in taking it. Especially on a second shot. Gotcha. So cool awesome man well hey um first of all i want to thank you for jumping on for those of you guys that are i, I want to i'm going to give my i'm going to give you a, i'm going to give you a plug taylor taylor is still teaching it at uh at uh at the ota in atlanta if you guys have never taken a class in ota in atlanta go do so they are awesome the first uh, options instructor i ever had is still one of the is still the president of ota atlanta he's awesome so taylor and the whole team there i love the guys so just uh, giving you, I'm giving you a plug, man. Taylor's Taylor was yeah. one of my students many, many moons ago. Yeah, well, I was trained by the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, man. It's good you were trained by Michelle. <laughs> so, You're my first, Chuck. You're the man. Awesome, man. Well, hey, you. thanks for jumping on with us. I'm gonna, I'm gonna log this thing off. Those of you guys that are still watching right. live, I appreciate you joining. I'll still do a daily market commentary recording uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, it'll be out bright and early. But uh, thanks, everybody. See you. See you, T. Thanks, Chuck. See you.